So this chart describes the basics of acid-base homeostasis. And as with any homeostatic mechanism, there's a few things we need to cover. What are the names when our acid gets too low and too high? What are the causes of when acid gets too low and too high? And that's going to be particularly complex because when we're talking about acid, there's two main ways that you can have these imbalances. One, it can be a problem with the respiratory system, or it could be metabolic. We'll talk about the effects, and then we'll also talk about the systems the body uses to remedy this lack of homeostasis or this imbalance. In a general sense, let's just really talk really briefly why this is important, and then we'll come back to this. The reason acid-base imbalance is important is because acids and hydroxy can change the shape of proteins. And proteins like to be in a particular shape, and if you change that shape, they might not function as well, or they could actually be destroyed. Another reason acid is important is because it alters potassium concentrations. And if you've watched the video on potassium, you realize that potassium is a pretty important ion. It plays a role in neuronal function, heart function. It's a pretty important ion. Another important ion that acid alters is calcium. And that's another reason acid is pretty important, because it can alter potassium and calcium levels, so other important ions. Before we go into the names, I want to point out this equation down here. This is the chemical equation for the bicarbonate carbonic acid buffer system. This is not the only buffering system that the body uses. There's a phosphate buffering system that functions in the kidney tubules. There's a protein buffer system which mainly works inside of cells. And there's other various buffer systems like the ammonia buffer system in the kidney. But the most powerful, if only because of its flexibility, is the bicarbonate carbonic acid system. Because it has this quick, the limited ability to buffer things in the blood. It also can bring in the respiratory system because CO2 can be altered in this buffering system, which means the respiratory system can either retain CO2 in order to increase acid, or can get rid of CO2 in order to decrease acid. The other reason this system is important is because it ties in with the kidneys too, because the kidneys can either excrete hydrogen ion, withhold hydrogen ion, or make sure that it doesn't excrete it. It can also excrete bicarbonate if it wants to, and it can in fact make bicarbonate. Let's move over to names then. If there's too low acid, this is called alkalosis, and it's defined by a pH of over 7.45. Remember that in the pH scale, a higher number means more basic, and a lower number means more acidic. Also recall that the pH scale is a log scale, which means any jump in pH represents a 10 times change in the concentration of hydrogen ion. So if we go, something, if we go from something with a pH of around 2, like lemon, to something with a pH of around 6, like urine, that's a change of 10,000 hydrogen ions. So when we go from urine to lemon, lemon juice has 10,000 more hydrogen ions than the urine, unless you ate a bunch of lemons and you've got that acid in your urine. If the pH goes below 7.35, this is acidosis. Now before we get to all the compensations, let's come back to the effects of acid-base imbalance. There's three primary effects, and they're on both sides. Acid and base can both disturb the hydrogen bonds that hold proteins in shape. So a hydrogen bond is a bond between an oxygen molecule generally and a hydrogen molecule, and that's going to generally hold this protein in the correct shape. But if there's additional hydrogen ion around, this O, and it might be hard to see, but this O can bind to the free H rather than this other hydrogen that's keeping this protein folded up. So if there's additional H, then this bond is going to be broken and this protein will start to unwind. So any additional H or OH can disturb hydrogen bonds in proteins and change the shape of that protein. This protein could be something like an enzyme or something structural or something important like that. And so disturbing those hydrogen bonds can have significant effects. Next, because hydrogen and potassium exchange across cell membranes, decreased acid was, will cause intracellular acid to leave the cell to compensate. So if there's decreased acid outside the cell, acid inside the cell will have to leave, and then it'll cause potassium to go into the cell. Acidity also affects calcium levels because albumin is a large circulating protein that carries a lot of negative charges, and these negative charges are often balanced by hydrogen or calcium. So if there's less hydrogen, then more calcium can bind to the albumin, and that's going to cause less free calcium and hypocalcemia. And then any consequence of hypocalcemia will also result. If there's more acid, as an acidosis up here, then there's more hydrogen ion to bind to the albumin. That'll kick the calcium off the albumin, and it'll cause hypercalcemia. Let's then go into causes, and the tricky thing about causes is there's two different types for both acidosis and alkalosis. And in order to understand the difference, it's kind of important to note that in the body, CO2 is essentially acid, because if you've got additional acid, by the law of mass action, if one of these reactants goes up, 
all of them will go up. So if there's additional acid, this would go up. That would mean CO2 would go up. Or if acid goes down, then CO2 goes down. So if then there's a problem with the respiration that translates into a problem with CO2, we'll have an acidosis alkalosis problem. If there's a problem getting rid of CO2, that means we're going to have an increased CO2, and that could occur because of impaired gas exchange, really rapid shallow breathing, or breathing is depressed due to narcotics. That increase in CO2 caused by the slow breathing is going to raise acid, lower pH, it's going to decrease bicarbonate. If, on the other hand, we have a disorder that causes rapid breathing, they're going to lose CO2, acid will go down, and pH will go up. Things that can actually cause rapid breathing are things like hyperventilation, tumors that affect respiration and increase it. In high altitude, you're trying to get an oxygen so you breathe fast. The major cause of hyperventilation is psychoneuroses, so mental conditions that have people breathing really, really fast. If either alkalosis or acidosis is caused by anything other than the respiratory system, then the alkalosis or the acidosis is called metabolic alkalosis and metabolic acidosis. In the case of metabolic alkalosis, the cause could be anything that decreases hydrogen ion. Vomiting in your stomach, you have a pool of acid. So if you vomit up that pool of acid, you're going to lose acid, and that's going to make you basic. Diuretics can cause an extreme loss of sodium, which carries hydrogen with it. Moving on, a key component of the bicarbonate carbonic acid buffer system is the absorption of bicarbonate. We need bicarbonate, and we get it from the digestive system. In constipation, there's more time to absorb bicarbonate because everything moves to the GI tract rather slow. So more bicarbonate means more basic. We're more basic. That causes metabolic alkalosis. Excess aldosterone can cause a loss of potassium. And if we lose potassium, then that means potassium will leave the cell. Hydrogen will have to go in the cell in exchange. That's going to cause alkalosis. Our last condition, then, is metabolic acidosis. This buildup of acid is generally caused by a loss of bicarbonate, so there's a decrease in bicarbonate. This can happen in diarrhea because everything's moved through the GI system so fast we couldn't absorb that bicarbonate, and if bicarbonate goes down, then acid goes up. Renal disease can also cause a loss of that bicarbonate. In diabetes, the lack of glucose results in the metabolism of fats to keto acids, and those acids cause acidosis. Hyperkalemia or hypercalcemia both lead to acidosis due to the exchange of potassium and hydrogen across the cell membrane. In the case of hypercalcemia, if there's excess calcium, it binds to the albumin, kicks the acid off, and now we've got acidosis. Lastly, lastly, a diet high in acid or consumption of alcohol can also lead to acidosis. When considering the methods to alleviate acidosis and alkalosis, it might appear to be fairly complex. But it's really not that complex. In the case of respiratory acidosis, we can secrete hydrogen ions from the proximal convoluted tubule and will actually make additional bicarbonate. In the case of metabolic, we can do those same things, but we can also increase ventilation to get rid of this additional CO2. So metabolic acidosis causes rapid breathing. In the case of respiratory alkalosis, the kidneys secrete bicarbonate in the proximal convoluted tubule in the case of metabolic, the kidneys are going to secrete that bicarbonate, and they're going to decrease ventilation to increase CO2, because if we increase CO2, we increase acid, and that cures the alkalosis.